morning, everybody. Great to be here, and I want to thank uh, Calgary Transit for hosting us here this morning. It's a great to be here to deliver uh, some exciting news about much-needed relief to Alberta's beleaguered transit systems, not only here in Calgary and also up in Edmonton, but in many other communities across the province as well. Transit systems took a big hit during the pandemic. People were working from home, and of course, many businesses cut back on staff. Some closed altogether. Students were uh, sometimes attending, attending school online. And all of these, plus other factors, contributed to result in huge revenue losses for Alberta transit systems. I understand that here in Calgary, ridership plummeted by a staggering 51%, while Edmonton's ridership dropped by more than 44%. And that's why I'm pleased to be here today to announce that financial relief is on its way so that buses and LRTs can continue to serve Albertans across the province. A few weeks ago, Minister Sani, Alberta's uh, Minister of Transportation, announced that an agreement was in place with the federal government for financial assistance to offset lost operating costs during the pandemic. Alberta's government is providing almost $80 million for municipal transit systems across the province. The federal government is matching that commitment for a total of $159 million combined. That joint funding is now in place and municipalities are now eligible to access that funding for their transit systems. Mayor Gondek, I'm uh, happy to tell you that the City of Calgary will receive $82.4 million in combined funding. Minister Sonny will travel to Edmonton this afternoon to announce what the capital city will receive, uh, but I can tell you it is a significant amount as well. We're also providing funding to 24 other municipalities across the province. Uh, transit service is a vital component to economic recovery as people start to get back to work. Well, more than start, y yesterday I was in the biggest traffic jam I can remember in downtown Calgary in about s six or seven years, and I was never happier to be in a traffic jam to see the economic activity coming back in a big way. We are pleased to provide assistance to ensure that buses and LRT services continue to move around uh, their communities in the province. Uh, so, so thank you for your time this morning, and I'd like to call on Minister Sani to provide some details on today's much needed cash infusion to ensure continued transit service to Albertans. Thank you, Premier, and good morning, everyone. It is such a wonderful announcement that we're making today, and I would like to welcome all of the elected officials who are here today to join us in this announcement. Again, it's a pleasure to be here to follow up on a recent announcement I made regarding funding for cash-strapped municipal transit services. As you know, we recently entered into a partnership with the Government of Canada to provide municipalities with nearly $159 million to help offset transit revenue, which has severely affected their operating costs. Alberta's government is matching the federal government's support and will be providing $79.5 million to the program. It's no secret that municipal transit systems from Wood Buffalo to Lethbridge suffered losses during the pandemic with people working from home and using transit less. As people start returning to work, public transit is a critical component to Alberta's economic recovery. Public transit is an essential service, in particular for students who are returning to on-campus learning, seniors accessing medical services, and other vulnerable populations who may be re-entering the workforce to get to and from work or re-engaging in social activities. This funding is over and above other public transportation funding provided to municipalities by the Alberta government. I'm happy, very happy, to announce that the paperwork has been completed, municipalities have been notified of requirements, and we are ready to move forward. Alberta will administer the Alberta Relief for Shortfalls for Transit Oper Operators, or RESTORE, program through grant agreements with qualified municipalities. While the major cities of Calgary and Edmonton suffered the most financially through the pandemic, we are providing financial assistance to many other municipalities. We have allocated, as the Premier had mentioned, $82.7 million for the Calgary region, which includes the City of Calgary, Airdrie, 
Rocky View County, Cochrane, and Okotoks. Funds will also be distributed to municipalities across the province, including Red Deer, Lethbridge, and Medicine Hat. And, as the Premier mentioned, I will be in Edmonton this afternoon announcing the dollar amounts for communities in the capital region and across northern Alberta. This funding renews our commitment to assisting municipalities, particularly to support services that took a direct hit from the pandemic. Alberta's government is proud to step up and offer this help to our municipalities. I would also like to thank our federal counterparts for these much needed programs and the funding that was provided. Thank you and it is now my pleasure to invite Minister Ian from the Government of Canada to share a few words. Thank you so much, and good morning, everyone. Bonjour à tous. Before I begin, I want to acknowledge that we're gathered here today on the Treaty 7 territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Sutina, the Stony Nakoda Nations, and the Métis Nation. Premier Kenny, Minister Sani, Mayor Gondek, Martin Bean from Bow Valley Regional Transit Services, and of course, my friend and colleague, George Dahal, Member of Parliament for Calgary Skyview. It is such a pleasure to be here in Calgary with all of you to celebrate this great announcement on behalf of Deputy Prime Minister Christian Freeland. We've been living in this pandemic for the last two years and we have all felt the negative impacts of it in one way or another. For some, the daily commute disappeared altogether. The connection to friends and family became a lot more distant, and three million Canadians lost their jobs. Even further, we know that the last two years have been especially tough for Indigenous, Black, and racialized people, and women from every corner of our great country. But a lot's happened since March 2020. The Canadian economy has not just recovered, it is booming because of the investments that we've made in people. We've seen the strongest jobs recovery in the G7, and as of March 2022, Canada has recovered 115% of the jobs lost at the height of the pandemic. We now have an unemployment rate of 5.3%, the lowest rate on record since 1976. There are more Canadians employed now than before the pandemic. But our work isn't just focused on this broad vision of employment statistics. It's about truly listening to the needs of city councillors, community leaders, and mayors right across their country, because let's face it, they know their communities best. So when mayors in Alberta told us about the revenues lost because of decreased ridership, we moved quickly to provide funding so that their transit systems can continue to operate. And that's why the Government of Canada is contributing up to $80 million to ensure municipalities can respond to the shortfall of ridership brought on by this pandemic. And we are so very pleased to be partnering with the province of Alberta, who is matching our contribution and folks I want to highlight this. I want to highlight this as an example of governments finding common ground, working hand in hand to deliver on what Canadians need the most. But this is also about making sure that public transit systems right across our country are supported because it is an essential service and it is ultimately a means of connection for so many people. For students, for example, it reconnects them with on-campus life. For seniors, it can mean the difference of maybe attending their favorite social activity or simply to gain a sense of independence. And it makes a real difference for people re-entering the workforce. Friends, this is a story about how we rebuild our connections to one another, how we make sure that no one is falling through the cracks and how governments from every corner of this country have Canadians' best interests at heart. I once again want to thank everybody here today. It has been an honour to be here in Calgary to participate in today's announcement. 
Now I am so pleased to introduce my colleague and friend, the MP for Calgary Skyview, MP George Chahal. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Northeast Calgary. I'm proud to stand here as the Member of Parliament for Calgary Skyview. I want to thank Premier Kenny, Minister Sani, Minister Ian, Mayor Gondek for joining us today, and also Mayor Janang and Mayor Brown for joining us here as well. Thank you. During the pandemic, the municipalities face some of the greatest challenges and I'm proud that as federal government, we were there to answer their call and partnering with the province to support Alberta. Public transit is a lifeblood for this community. It ensures kids get back to school, families to work, and doctor appointments are met. With the funding today, we are ensuring we are there for people in this community and in this riding. The continued federal support for our municipalities and in partnership with the province show how we can best serve Canadians when we all work together. Thank you so much and now I'd like to turn it over to Mayor Gondek. Good morning, everybody. Um, as the fifth politician to speak, I will keep it brief. Everybody's already covered everything. They've covered the dollar value. They've covered how critical this is for municipalities. And I want to give a special thank you to my fellow members of councils in the Calgary region who are here because we did this by advocating for what our region needed. And I want to thank both the federal and provincial governments for listening to us and working with us and delivering on the funding that we so desperately needed to make sure that people could get to work and get to school and get to appointments. I can tell you in Calgary, we heard from many people, not only within our city, but within the region who access our city on a regular basis, that they had been pummeled before the pandemic. The economic recession had taken a toll on people. They had lost their jobs. They were in precarious positions of employment, often having to work two or three jobs to replace the one they had lost. Many people went from a two or three vehicle household down to one, and transit was the only way they could get around. Transit was critical for them to be able to put food on the table and to maintain a sense of purpose in the world. So when I say thank you to the other orders of government for joining with us as municipalities to deliver on transit service, it's sincerely from everyone in this region who needs transit to get around and get by. The pandemic was an additional layer of complication and struggle for people. And I'm happy to say that we are 60% recovered in terms of ridership and this Funding for our operating shortfalls will allow us to keep going and giving that service to folks. I want to thank the transit teams. There's so many folks from transit here today in this amazing facility. It's also your advocacy and your commitment to making sure that people can get around in our city and our region that got us here today. I'm really proud of the fact that the ministers that are responsible at both orders of government took the time to talk to us and understand what it was that we needed. So thank you. We couldn't have done it without you. I'm very happy that we're all here together today with this good news. Let's keep doing this on all our files. Thank you. Good morning. Um, my name is Martin Bean. I'm the CAO of the Bow Valley Regional Transit Services Commission. And I'm excited to be here today to celebrate and express our appreciation for this funding under the Restore program. In case you aren't familiar, the Commission operates Rome Transit in and around Banff National Park, which we acknowledge as Treaty 7 territory. We're a collaboration of the towns of Banff and Canmore and Improvement District 9, which also includes the hamlet of Lake Louise. To keep this special part of Alberta environmentally sustainable, we strive to enable residents and visitors to move throughout the Bow Valley without the use of a private vehicle, which we're proud to have carried 
more than 1.5 million people in 2019, helping to take countless cars off the road. However, the pandemic created challenges for all and every part of life, and transit's been no exception. In the Bow Valley, we saw our ridership decline by more than 80% in the first few months of the pandemic, and we've been working hard to recover ever since. As you all know, transit's been an essential service for the last two years by connecting people to medical appointments, grocery stores, pharmacies, and to workplaces, especially in our area in the Bow Valley where those supports are limited and shared throughout the region. Our focus continues to be on keeping service levels convenient and consistent while ensuring safety for our passengers and our staff. For example, despite low ridership and revenues, we adopt a significant COVID safety measures, including enhanced cleaning, fogging, sanitizing, and installing plexiglass shields on all of our buses. These measures are costly, however ne necessary for the safety of all. As such, the Restore funding is welcome good news and critical to Rome's operations and to transit agencies everywhere as we move out of the pandemic. We're looking forward to the road ahead as we regain rider confidence and help our region economically recover. On behalf of our partner municipalities, I applaud the Alberta government and the government of Canada on this collaboration as they continue to support public transit's growth and success in the province and across the country. Thank you. That concludes our formal speaking portion today. We're going to go move forward with our media Q&A. For those of you in person, there's a media mic over to the side there. Please identify your name, your outlet, and who you'd like to direct your question to. We'll go with one question and one follow-up. So go ahead on the floor. Uh, question from Mayor Gondek. Um, my first question, I guess, for you, how much does this help with the Calgary Transit Revenue shortfall, and do you know where that's at right now, or how much more is left to make up? I can tell you that this makes a significant dent into the shortfall that we had. Um, we still have a little bit more to go, but without this funding, I don't know what we would have done. This has gone a long way to helping us get back to the service levels that we need to provide. So this was much needed. We couldn't have done it with only federal funding. We absolutely, absolutely needed that provincial match, and we're very close to being where we need to be. I guess what kind of a situation will we be in if uh, we cannot cover that uh, revenue shortfall for Calgary Transit? Well, I can tell you we have heard from Calgarians that they're already suffering by some of the, the root shortages that they're seeing, the frequency having gone down. Um, I can tell you the transit team, the leadership did their best to make sure that they were assessing which routes needed to keep the service levels they had and which ones we could cut. But at the end of the day, there are people in every part of this city that need to get to appointments and to work and to school. And so getting back to where we were is going to take a little bit of time, but this gets us so much closer than we were. Thank you. Last call for questions on the floor and then we'll move to the phones. All right, operator, can you please put through our first caller? Chris Barco, Calgary Herald. Hi, this is a question for the Premier. Premier, last week the federal budget said that the federal government will engage with the provinces on carbon capture and sequestration with the expectation that the provinces will strengthen the financial incentives for CCUS. And we saw the oil stands producers say that they were looking at the province to maybe bridge the difference between what they were seeking and the 50% investment tax credit. Will the province be prepared to provide any kind of incentive for CCUS in the province? Th thanks, Chris. And I uh, do want to acknowledge and uh, appreciate the detailed commitment to the in investment tax credit for carbon capture, utilization, and storage in uh, last week's federal budget. It's a critically important uh, part of the ambition of the oil sands producers to get to net zero emissions by 2050. Uh, in fact, as you know, they estimate about half of the progress that they can make, uh, certainly between now and 2030, will be as a result of carbon sequestration. Chris, as you know, uh, the government of Alberta has been a world leader on uh, supporting CCUS. We adopted uh, this technology 12 years ago and funded it through uh, the levy on major industrial emissions, uh, the first uh, such levy in North America. We have invested $1.8 billion in 
demonstrating the feasibility of carbon sequestration technology. We'll continue to support it. Uh, and indeed, we'll be making a very important fiscal commitment on top of the federal tax credit uh, by providing for a um, offset in royalties payable by the oil sands companies for their, uh, their capital costs associated with CCUS. So they're, if they put billions of dollars into, I mean, they're talking, as you know, a goal of 30 billion in potential capital investment in CCUS, uh, that would be discounted from their royalty payments to the Alberta government in future years. So that is already a very substantial uh, fiscal contribution by Alberta. In addition, um, as you know, Alberta reduced our uh, business tax rate, the job creation tax cut, has also strengthened the financial position of those companies. Uh, and so uh, we've, we, we have been making and will be making very significant uh, contributions to the financial viability of those companies so they can make those import, important investments in the future. But uh, I can tell you, uh, in my discussions, at least with the, uh, my federal counterparts, with, with Prime Minister Trudeau, Deputy Prime Minister Freeland, uh, they have not proposed that Alberta should come in with a, with a separate or additional investment tax credit. And Chris, I think it's important to underscore that this is not just about Alberta or just about the oil sands, but there will be many uh, industries in many parts of the country that uh, will invest in carbon sequestration using the investment tax credit. And I have not heard that question put to other provinces, uh, whether it be at the, the uh, cement industry, the fertilizer industry, petrochemicals, uh, power production and others, uh, they'll all be interested across the country in utilizing this. Do you have a follow-up, Chris? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, Premier, just a two-part question then. Do you think the federal incentive that is provided in the budget is enough? That's the first question. And the second one is, are you ruling out a direct investment of any kind by the province? No, I'm not ruling that out because we will continue to make direct investments in carbon sequestration funded by the Technology Innovation and Emissions Reduction uh, Program and uh, we'll continue to make those investments just as we did um, over the past two years in the Alberta Carbon Trunk Line and continue to do through the Quest uh, project operated by Shell. Um, uh, and we'll keep an open mind. We just want to make sure that uh, uh, the, it's not just, again, it's not just the oil sands producers. We, we also see uh, hydrogen, petrochemical producers, and others who will be using CCUS. Uh, and that's one of the reasons we are um, going through the process of allocating uh, pore space uh, for sequestration. As you know, uh, Minister Savage announced the uh, approved proposed uh, requests in the industrial heartland area of Edmonton. Uh, the Department of Energy is now working on the Cold Lake area, which will likely be utilized by the oil sands producers. So, you know, we, we continue to, as early adopters and promoters of CCUS technology, we continue to keep an open mind, but uh, our f very substantial fiscal commitment will be found in the uh, deduction from royalties payable because of the capital costs associated with CCUS. Thank you, Premier. Operator, can you please put through our next caller? Rachel Emanuel, Western Standard. <clears throat> Hi, my question is for Premier Jason Kenney. Um, Premier, you shared on your Twitter, Twitter the video of thousands of Shanghai residents screaming over strict COVID-19 lockdown measures, and you said Alberta has taken a balanced approach and learned to live with COVID-19. Uh, yesterday, Theresa Tam said Canada is in its sixth wave. So I'm wondering if your comments online mean that you've committed to not reinstating COVID-19 measures in Alberta, even if cases continue to rise. Thank you. The Audio quality is, is not uh, not clear here, so I, but I think I, I heard most of that question ab about COVID. So, um, look, we can fully expect that there will be future waves uh, of COVID. That's in the nature of a contagious respiratory virus like this. Uh, but if history is any guide, we can also reasonably expect that it will decline in virulence, in pathogenicity, and in, in, in severity, uh, as did the Spanish flu. Uh, with respect to the wave that is being seen, seen in many parts of the world right now from the BA2 subvariant of Omicron, uh, I, we are paying particularly close attention to the European jurisdictions uh, and uh, North American jurisdictions that went into both the Omicron and BA2 waves before uh, Western Canada. And uh, while we certainly see a, a rise in infections and case counts and 
uh, to some degree hospitalizations. We have not witnessed in any European or North American jurisdiction uh, pressure on the hospital systems that is unsustainable. And I want to remind you that, it, at least in Alberta, we have only ever used public health measures as a last and limited resort uh, to avoid a, a catastrophe in the hospitals. Um, we see no evidence as we look to similar jurisdictions that um, the BA2 wave uh, poses a, a threat uh, to healthcare capacity. Um, in fact, I'm not aware of a single European jurisdiction that's been hit by a BA2 in the past couple of months, which has responded by introducing new public health measures uh, for exactly that reason. It is, a, a, by all apparent appearances, less severe than the original Omicron variant, which is much less severe than earlier variants. Um, and also, we, of course, we continue to build up uh, population immunity. Uh, both through ever-growing levels of vaccination and uh, pr prior infection. So that's what gives us, uh, I think, good reason to believe that we, what we'll experience here in Alberta will be similar to what they've experienced in Europe, uh, in uh, Central and Eastern North America, which is some increase in numbers, but it will be manageable without having to resort to public health measures. I think what we're seeing in Asia is a different situation in, in, um, in China, in parts of China, in Hong Kong, for example. Um, where I gather upwards of 50% of seniors are not vaccinated. And uh, they have predominantly used the Sinovax, which is less effective against severe outcomes than the uh, vaccines used in, in Canada. So uh, I think that's given them a higher level of vulnerability in certain Asian countries. Go ahead with your follow-up, Rachel. Um, yeah, just as you're talking about, you know, lots of vaccination rates, your government has secured Novavax, which might be a preferable option to some Albertans um, because the vaccine doesn't use mRNA technology. So I'm wondering if you're hoping Albertans who have so far remained unvaccinated against COVID-19 will get the Novavax shot instead. Sure, and we have um, a number of vaccines available, approved by Health Canada, and available uh, to Albertans that are not uh, derived from mRNA technology. Uh, such as, of course, uh, the AstraZeneca, uh, the Janssen, and uh, as soon as that, that other vaccine, as soon as we start to get supplies, and we want to acknowledge in the efforts of the federal government on procurement, uh, they'll be made available to Albertans. Thank you, and uh, that's it for our queue today. So that concludes our media portion of our Thank press you. conference.